So the two most common types of quarks are up quarks and down quarks, uh, symbols U and D. And in addition to the up quark, we also have the charm and also the top. So these ones here are quite similar in many ways. On the bottom, what we have uh, is the strange, and I guess really on the bottom, we have the bottom quark. Now these things here, uh, the ones at the top, the up, charm and top, these all have a charge of plus two thirds. And this is two thirds of the elementary charge. The down, the strange and the bottom all have a charge of minus a third. Okay, and uh, what we can look at is maybe um, how these combine into to various baryons. Now a baryon is made out of three quarks. So for example, if we had a proton, a proton is made out of an up quark, an up quark, and a down quark. And if we look at the overall charge on a proton, because it's made out of an up quark with a charge of plus two thirds, um, added to another two thirds and take away a third, that means the overall charge on a proton is equal to uh, plus one of the elementary charge. Now the other thing about this proton, uh, and you've got to be able to remember what, actually what's inside it, if you think about a proton as being very positive, then if it's positive, then it's generally up. And it's basically more up than down, and therefore it's positive, okay? So protons are made out of an up quark, an up quark, and a down quark. A neutron, on the other hand, uh, it's still made out of up and down quarks, but this time we have an up, a down, and a down. And again, if we think about uh, the charge, we've basically got minus a third, minus a third, plus two thirds, which gives it a charge of zero, okay? And again, you've just got to be able to remember the structure of that. And basically, when you have three quarks together, what we have then is a baryon. And in addition to these quarks, we also have what we call the antiquarks. Now this one here might be an anti-up, okay, and to show it's an antimatter particle, we just put a bar over the top. Now the, the important thing is that antimatter still has mass, and the mass of an anti-up is the same as the mass of an up, but what it does is its other properties like charge and things tend to reverse. And also we have things perhaps like an anti-down, so I'm just going to show that down here. And what we can then have is maybe an anti-up, an anti-up, and an anti-down. And if we have an anti-up, an anti-up, and an anti-down, what we then make is an antiproton. Now this antiproton, because it's made out of these three particles and their charge is reversed, it's got a charge of minus two thirds, uh, minus two thirds and plus a third, which means the charge on an antiproton is equal to minus one of the elementary charge. So um, antimatter, it does exist, it is real. And the important thing is that when you have matter and antimatter, when they meet, they create energy or when we have a load of energy that can make uh, you know, pair, anti-pair kind, of, uh, uh, kind of, sort of uh, couplings together. So um, that's a bit about some of the quarks, and especially if we have three quarks joined together. So we've seen that when we have three uh, quarks joined together, what we make is a baryon. And basically, if we have things which are made out of uh, normal quarks, then we say that this has a baryon number of one. If you have something which is perhaps maybe an anti-baryon, perhaps like an anti-proton, it then has a baryon number of minus one. The reason being that each quark itself has a baryon number of plus a third. And basically, if you have a third plus a third plus a third, that makes their baryon number equal to one. But we also have uh, things called mesons. Now, a meson basically means medium, and that means heavy. Now, a meson is made out of a quark, added to an anti-quark. And there are certain kind of particles that you might hear about. We have things called kaons, and we also have things called pions, okay? It all looks like a bit made up, but I guess it is. Uh, so kaons have a symbol K, and pions have a symbol of pi. You can see that on comes up in loads of particles, like electron, proton, neutron, meson, and so the on is to do with the particle fact. Now, basically, if you had a kaon, you might have perhaps an, an up quark and an anti-strange. So this one here is my anti-strange. And basically if you have an up quark and an anti-strange, what you make then is a kaon plus. Okay, if we think about the charge, two thirds and plus a third. Okay, so this is a k plus. And also, you know, maybe you might have perhaps um, the opposite. So you might have a strange quark and an anti-up. And again, uh, this makes a, a K minus. Okay, so there's lots of kind of different particles that exist. It might be that um, you might have maybe down quarks and uh, up quarks together. So you might have a down quark and an anti-up. 
And if you had this, then you might have perhaps uh, a pi minus. Okay, so that's basically made out of a down and an anti up. Okay, there's lots of things that you don't actually need to remember. Okay, you just need to recognize that basically a meson is made out of a quark and an anti quark. Therefore, its baryon number is going to be equal to a third minus a third because that's got a this quark has a baryon number of a third that has a baryon number of minus a third and therefore its total baryon number is zero because it's not a baryon whereas baryons are made up of either three quarks or three antiquarks.